Sean, starting off in the first race, two first-timers, Jetstorm number 10 and Wildfire, representing the Stallion's ideal world and one of your favourites, Pomodoro. Yeah, always tough um, inside course over sprints with first-timers. Um, I think they both probably find it a little sharp. I think the Pomodoro has um, a bit more speed, so he, he, he could be running on. And um, obviously the Wildfire, he's, he's definitely going to need further. And if he's running on late, I'll be more than happy. So no great measure of confidence that you could be in the winner's enclosure? Depends what's in the race, Andrew. Gabby, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know that it's, uh, it's tough maintaining this body of yours. Having said that, you start off the day with a really nice draw on a track where it's imperative to be drawn well for St. John Gray, who can really get them ready, Rocky Path. Yes, uh, he's nicely drawn at three. He obviously ran on Thursday, he ran third, beaten three lengths. Um, so I'm not sure if Mr. Gray is going to run him, but it doesn't look like the strongest of fields, and uh, I'm sure he'll be in the frame. Lovely colours, of course, uh, profitable colours. Number 10, out of sight, with Lyle back in the irons. Yeah, once again, I think she's a filly that um, probably struggled um, first time inside course, but uh, the run will stand in good stead. <laughs> Andrew, thank you very much for affording us this opportunity to chat to you on behalf of your wife. We start off in the second race at Turfontein. Number nine is Miss Samurai and Keegan DeMello. Nice fully, uh, Andrew. Uh, wouldn't shock me if she runs the back of the quartet. Not well drawn. Uh, she's going to be green though, but it wouldn't shock if she flies up and probably runs third or fourth. She is a nice fully though. Visuality, she hasn't been seen out since July. Uh, her form was a bit patchy, but we know that she's got a lot of ability. Yeah, she has a, a lot of ability. I think her, her last few runs are best ignored. The funny thing is the whole of last season we were off the wrong mark, and we were off the wrong mark again, I think, it's, but this time on the on the right side of it. So, uh, yeah, of this type of merit rating, um, if it's not uh, Saturday, it'll certainly be soon. Your next engagement is in the third. You've been riding with a good measure of success for a stable that's in cracking form, Candace Dawson. You ride Jamison Girl. Yeah, Candace is in fantastic form and it's nice to be on her horses. Uh, Jamison Girl have won in the past of a sprint, so she's going the 1450 on Saturday. I did watch her last run over 1450 and, you know, she got caught deep. She, she pulled most of the way, so to still run fourth was a fantastic run. We've got a nice draw on Saturday and, uh, you know, if I can get her nice and relaxed and in a good rhythm early on, I think she'll be a big runner. Okay, and then you've a pair of Celestina, who's number six, and number four, La Bastide, who won her penultimate start with Lyle and Dennis Schwartz. Um, riding arrangements suggest that there may be a preference for Celestina. Is that the case? Um, you know, at the end of the day, Celestina's got the one draw. And um, she's, uh, I think, a filly that, that, that um, is going to appreciate the course and distance. There's nothing wrong with La Bastide. There's no, no need to run her if, she, if I expected a poor run. Um, they should both be competitive. I may be slightly favour Celestina, but there's not much in it. I think if you remember last time they met, Celestina was favoured and got cooked by the stable companions. So. Chase Mujan having been victorious on Skipper's last time out for Jeff Woodruff and Jeff Van Leer. You must be happy to have the ride this time. Yes, the stable is doing really nicely. I'm so pleased uh, for Mr Woodruff. The horses all coming well at the right time. And look, I think she's a, she's a wonderful filly. She doesn't show a lot at home. She doesn't give away much, but uh, when she comes to, to the track, she, she knows what to do. Can we bank her? I wouldn't say bank her. Uh, look, it is a small field. I am drawn wide, so I hopefully won't have to make up too much ground, but uh, she's a big runner. Young Luke Ferraris climbing aboard in cahoots. Oh, in cahoots is a horse that um, he was very, very impressive on, on, on debut, and we actually think very highly of him. Uh, unfortunately, he was crying out to be gelded, and, and we did put it on hold for a little while. Uh, we, we've, we've, we've done it now, and he certainly um, benefits. Uh, there's certainly been benefits, and he'll, he'll be running on well. Lovely. Then you have to wait until the first leg of the jackpot where you've got Mount Keith. We know that he's got loads of ability, and he's been a reliable horse. Very much so. It's his first time in the deep end. He's well drawn, though, and he's got 52 and a half. Wouldn't like to know what he's got to beat. He's one of those horses that just come here and just throws everything out there. He's going to run a good race. Look, listen to me. You can nearly take a guarantee he'll be in the top three, you know. 
we are hoping he's good enough to, to, to win. I phoned Mr. Magnum this morning to ask him for interviews about his runners on Saturday and he said he doesn't have such good runners, but you nevertheless are aboard Prince of Kahal for him in the fifth. Yeah, he's a lovely horse. Um, I sat on him in the week. He, he's doing quite nicely at home. I just w like the way he won that assessment plate. I think um, you know he, he was very high on the handicapping this horse and always ran his heart out but would never get there, always get beaten a length or two. So he has come down a bit in the ratings and, and that win in the assessment plate I think has done a lot of his confidence. We widely drawn but he will be running at them. Marvellous. Then you get on to the sixth race where you've got the pair of Delize Promise and the once very famous Ocean City. Horses 9 and 10, Messrs Munger and Penny do duty. Well, Ocean City was really actually just there to kind of lead them, you know. Delize Promise, well, phew, the amount of... What she shows us at home, it's like she's got a graded race in her. Uh, I've looked at the race, she's probably got uh, Diwali to beat. He's going to have to be at his best to beat her, put it that way. I, I, I must confess I'll be shocked if she's not in the first two. We think quite a bit of her. And then we move on to the seventh where you've got the pair of Get Your Grove on, Keegan de Miller, and Trip to Ibiza. Trip to Ibiza, well drawn. Mm, could, could probably run third or fourth. She's dropped in the rating. I'm expecting a much better run from her. Get Your Grove on, doing well, probably a little bit worried around the turn. She's got one squunk leg, and 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 and, and I, I I probably think she'll be better up the straight, but she's well drawn, and we're hoping for the best. I, I, I must confess, she's got to show me that she's as good. She's decent. She's not bad. If it was up the straight, I'd have been confident. Round the turn, I've got question marks. So now, in the trainer's exam, what is the definition of squunk leg? I've got no idea. I've never written one. <laughs> I probably will fail it. <laughs> You've had a great deal of success for St. John Grey and not least of all with Dance with the Devil, but you back in those green and white silks on 12 Oaks, who's nicely drawn over 12. Yes, yeah, she's got a wonderful draw. Um, she's not the very biggest of fillies and she's got a lot of weight to shoulder. She's got to carry 61 kilos, but I think she is the class of the race and if everything goes away and, and she's back to her best form, I think she'll be a runner. Two once again in the eighth, numbers three, Black Sail and Titsikama Star with Ryan Munger and Dion Sampson. Well, I had a look at uh, Titsikama Star. We're starting to work her out store, you know. She probably wants more ground and probably going to go 10 furlong, but she's she's probably not strong enough for it yet. Black Sail, the negative, uh, We haven't. he hasn't been here and we haven't properly galloped him. I look at the race, I think they can run in a relay and he'll beat him. Okay, same again. I phoned Erico Verdanis for comments on his runners and he said, you know, when I've got some good runners, you can come and see me. But you're riding Noble Emblem for him, who's also very well drawn. Yes, he's drawn five. Um, he's going the mile now. I think he'll be better on a galloping track. But in saying that, he, he's been working nicely at home. He moves very well. And uh, I think he's going to get the maximum trip. But... Uh, you know, in the maidens, and it doesn't look the strongest of maidens. I'm hoping that he can run into the money. And then finally, to put the lid on the day, horse number 14, Chakra, is the mount of Lyle Hewitson, first time at the track. Yeah, once again, a Pomodoro, um, you know, a uh, horse that is looking like a staying type. And, yeah, hopefully he gives a good account of himself um, on this inside mile. Now, the decision, obviously, to move the Grand Heritage uh, is a, a very constructive one for the horse. I'm sure the sponsor's happy. Um, at the end of the day, I think they did what they felt was best. Does it suit you in terms of preparation? Yeah, I think we have to congratulate Pumalela on, on, on doing what was the obvious thing to do. Um, you know, for sponsors, for owners, for trainers, for the industry. Um, they've communicated well, they've been proactive, and um, I think that was the only conclusion they could come out, come out with, and I'm glad they didn't try and force the issue. I mean, I, I've said so a little while ago, I don't think I'm that well represented um, this year. Uh, my, uh, one of my better choices never made it into the, into the race. Um, however, the, a little bit of extra time certainly suits me. Okay, so with your head on the block, <laughs> this is a family show, yeah. which is your best ride for the day. Look, I, I, I wouldn't be able to point out one ride, but I think Jamison Girl, Shippers and Prince of Kohol 
look very lively runners and, and just hoping that the races can fall into place and go more. Finally, I had a chat to Mr. Terry about the decision to move the Grand Heritage, which seems like it's been pretty warmly received by all concerned. I think it was the right decision and uh, uh, look, no negatives for me about it, let's just look forward from here and uh, hopefully it will be a success on the 13th.